So we've seen two years, more or less, of really strong gains in this particular yeah. sector. What warning signs are you seeing? Where, where are investors getting spooked? Yeah, sure. So investors are broadly worried about recession fears and everything else. And semis do tend to be quite a bit uh, correlated to the economy and GDP growth. Um, beyond that, I think just given the strength we've had over the last couple of years, there is real concern about sustainability. People are worried about um, order patterns in the wake of like really long lead times and tight supply. In those environments, customers tend to order more than they need. It's called double ordering. You can think about a stockpiling, that kind of thing. Um, we've been nervous about that in a number of areas. Uh, PCs, uh, not only is we worried about PC demand, but I, I think the CPUs, like the stuff that like Intel and, and, and AMD sell, were over shipping by, by massive amounts last year, even as PCs were strong. I've been worried about similar dynamics in automotive and industrial and some other areas. Now, we are starting to see some areas of weakness, primarily in the consumer space. Um, PCs are weak. Smartphones are weak. TVs are weak, GPUs, graphics cards are, are weak, and consumer in, inflation and everything is impacting. So we're seeing those those kind of issues there. Most of the end markets, the other end markets beyond consumers still seem to be broadly holding up, although these same signs around uh, sustainability and, and potential stockpiling and overordering, I think, are still building. And so lots of investors are worried that those are some of the next shoes to, to drop. And it's going to get very interesting as we go into the back half of the year as recession fears are maybe crystallize, um, we see a little bit more about where the the broader economy is going. We see what's going on with inflation and everything else. Um, but investors are in that kind of a mindset right now, and that's why the stocks have been have been quite weak. Are there good buys here? I mean, I, I see that you are recommending that investors stay far, far away from Intel at this point. But who do you like amid this question of whether there's been, I don't know, was it fear of missing out when you do double ordering just in case you didn't get the, the delivery that you were expecting? Well, it's not fear of missing out. You got to remember like the, the consequences of as a customer of holding too much inventory, it's not that bad. But if you can't ship, you know, like a $50,000 automobile because you're missing one fifty cent microcontroller, that's a huge problem. So in many cases, customers can be incentivized to, to order more um, if it takes them longer and longer mm. to get the parts. And you got to remember the semiconductor companies themselves have no idea. Their visibility is zero. And I'm not blaming them. It's not like it's bad. It, it just is. They, they just don't know. All they see are the order patterns in front of their face. Now, yes, like what, what might be um, interesting to look at in this environment, for, for clients of mine who are more worried about like the, 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 cycl the cyclical issues, um, we like Broadcom. They don't have a ton of consumer exposure outside of Apple, and Apple right now is actually doing fine. It's mostly a data center and enterprise and that kind of stuff. Um, they have not actually been overshipping. They've been deliberately undershipping because they, the CEO there, Hawk 10, knows, knows what happens in cycles, so they've been undershipping. They've got a big software business, which is more stable and higher margin and offers support. Highest margins, highest free cash on the industry, and it's cheap relative to the rest of the sector. So I think that's one that, that's good. There's a couple of others I, I would say more secularly driven that maybe have exposure to some of these end markets, but I think are fighting through it really, really well and maybe even punished a little more than they should have in this environment. And we mm -hmm. like names like, like Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, or Qualcomm, um, who have other secular aspects of the story, whether it's, it's share gains or product roadmaps or anything like that, that I think are helping to offset some of the weakness we're seeing in the markets, and they're powering me, through it um, quite nicely. Let me, you, you mentioned that companies don't have visibility, and I can think of no company that will have less visibility than Taiwan Semiconductor. Not only huh. do they not know about the markets, they don't know about uh, the, the state of their uh, financial and political independence. Talk to me about Taiwan. Yeah, so I don't cover TSMC, so I'm, I'm going to not talk about the stock. It's a okay. colleague of mine. I'll let him tell that story. But Taiwan in general... That's sort of at the heart of everything that's going on, the, the CHIPS Act and everything else. Like The CHIPS Act is not going to, to massively increase the amount of capacity that is installed like worldwide. Demand will determine that, not politicians. What the CHIPS Act is supposed to do is to try to get some of those projects started here rather than other places like Taiwan, because the, the, the world is very dependent on Taiwan. Um, most of the world's leading edge semiconductors come from there. And it's 100 miles offshore from China, and they think they own the ground that it's sitting on. And so, yeah, that is a, a big concern. Um, it is not something that is easily fixable. It's not something you're going to fix in a year. It's not something you're going to fix with $52 billion over five years, which is kind of what the chip sector is. It's probably a trillion dollars in, in, in 20 years to, 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 re, to duplicate what's over there, if that was even possible. Um, but you got to start somewhere. So the best time to do this would have been 20 years ago. The, the second best time is probably now. <laughs>